R-O-R. <laughs> there we see there. That was the 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 screenshot I was looking for. And so that's for Walter Bosley. Uh, we're gonna be all doing an episode with Walter um coming up. It'll be my third with him and you know, uh, last stream we did last week, he was in the live chat and uh, we brought it up and that will be one epic show because he does do a lot of investigation into lost ancient highly advanced civilizations yes. as well as uh, the UAP UFO phenomenon mm -hmm. and uh, his experience as a special agent investigator for the Air Force and his father's history with it and there's so much disclosure coming out right now. Sorry to get off topic, but I just got to no, do a quick plug for everything um, with the UAP and UFO stuff. Uh, the Ashton Forbes uh, MH370, which also those videos, I remember watching them when it, in 2014 when it came out. It was like on before its news website. And I was like, man, that shit's got to be fake aliens. Like, eh. But then it's like now from a new perspective, it's like the Pentagon has acknowledged those Tic Tacs are real and it was like those were the Tic Tacs and then like the movement of them the thermals and everything it's just like if you listen to Bo Dr. Bob Green here of the Martin Fleischman Memorial Project break down the videos and just the in intricate physics of it which I instantly recognized and I'm like this is too complex to be uh, like just some random fakery like it's showing the actual like inner workings of this cold fusion aspects of the entropy wow. of the yeah. um, technology that isn't really like it's classified and hasn't really been acknowledged or shown before and it's like it's fully up there and in it and the only reason you're seeing it is because it's from these high-grade military spy satellites and this qr uh, um m or reaper drone footage of the infrared of it as well that it just it's absolutely nuts and it's like the quality of it it's like for that sort of footage to come out four days after the mh370 went missing and like it, it's it's just too complex and too legitimate to be a hoax from that time period now that i'm reflecting back on it yeah so anyways he <laughs> did an interview with uh, Salvador Pius and alien scientist Jeremy Reese has an interview coming up with Salvador uh, Pius uh, on the 12th here in three days that I'm also going to be co-streaming on my channel. Probably get to ask him some questions at the end. And uh, he is the former Navy engineer, now Space Force employee uh, that has the patents for the essentially Tic Tac technology for the Navy. I believe is how it officially goes. <laughs> yeah, so it's quite, quite fascinating, interesting, and I look forward to that. The and drip of disclosure has become a little bit uh, faster. A flow, right? <laughs> right? It's just, and yeah, so, and that's most likely Tic Tacs are drones, they're AI programmed, and they are most likely terrestrial human or something this is, this is interesting you say this uh when i was in egypt in 2018 um i had an experience uh, we were all on the nile cruise we were sitting on the rooftop sharing cigarettes and you know having drinks and all of a sudden we hear aircraft coming over the nile area so we're on we're all on a nile cruise going from luxor to aswan and whizzing by us are these two f-15s and they're chasing an orb <laughs> and, really? yeah, yeah, actually actually witnessed that. And, yeah and then i've behind, seen footage of that them, and it's like there, there were like 10 of us that witnessed this uh, a friend of mine has actual uh, she has photos of it behind it is another orb just bobbing along going hello here we are now what's funny with this is this was in Oh, when was I in Egypt in 2018? Like Mar March or April. And at the same time here in Oregon, there was a something that flashed on the radar. And we have at the Portland International Airport uh, is one of, well, 
anyway, there's there's Air Force technology there. And so they scramble their jets and chase this orb all the way up past Olympia. And it literally was on the same day. And so you, you've got to ask yourself, okay, is this test technology? So we're using these high high fast drones to test the accuracy of our human pilots is is how i look at that in a sense but that's that's my right. experience that that makes perfect sense, sense. and that yeah. sounds like what also happened at the nimitz encounters hmm, interesting okay cuz this would be a, it would be a readiness drill i mean quite quite literally <laughs> it's like how do we how do we react to something that we aren't told about it's, right. It's well, also bad. unifying your soldiers, <laughs> creating like this higher force sort of like feeling and experience, like sure. essentially a fake alien invasion being portrayed upon the military by a secret why, dark sect. Yeah. Why not test readiness? Exactly. Correct. So, yeah. Anyway, that's that's my three cents on that. But. It's it's interesting that you bring that up because there's a lot there's a lot going on and weirdly, it is all symbolic, right? What is what is a space force? You know, <laughs> it's something that that protects us from the land, from the sea, from the air, and from space. And so here we have you know a four level symbology of protection. Uh, you know, it's very subtle, but there is subtle symbology, right? And so this is obviously our topic tonight. We look at ob object object sim symbology, and uh, we were chatting earlier before we went went live, and object symbology comes back around to something like the Statue of Liberty, right? And so most people look at this worldwide as, oh, it's a symbol of freedom, you know. Oh, da -da. But in reality, liberty is a nautical term. It's a nautical law term. And so when you pull into port or you birth into port, and you give up your, your certificate of manifest or what you're carrying on your ship, your birth certificate. Jordan Maxwell, give a shout out there to, to him bringing that forth. Um, your crew will ask the captain, do we have liberty to go ashore? Which means a short time shore leave. And so the Statue of Liberty is truly about that. It's, do I have... Captain, do I have the ability to come ashore, right? Okay. Freedom? Giving up your liberties yeah. to enter someone else's In, land. You're, Indo, which is you're weird no because you're your own sovereign. You're just you see it giving... from the bottom and it's the light bearer. And so strangely, this is this is also how Lucifer is portrayed. In in Italy, there's a couple of statues of the Lucifer with, with the booklet and the torch and, and the corona, right? The crown, the sun crown the sundial. And so uh, it's fascinating that we're always looking up at the statue, but if you go above it and look down, he, she, it, um, is it, the statue of Liberty, this yeah. Lilith Luciferian. It's, like... it's male, female, or, or androgyne, which is interesting. And so, but it, it's still shackled to the pedestal that's on top of that star fort. <laughs> That is Ellis Island, and you, you've got to just go. Okay, if this is freedom, why is the Statue of Freedom shackled to the pedestal it's standing on? Right, ball and chain, right there. And so that that's interesting that we have this object of symbology. There's there's status symbol as well, right? Oh, I got my They're new Rolex. In plain sight, right? That it's everything is backwards. They're spell casting down on society. You, everything is backwards. World backwards spell casts, and well, that's, that what is what is the English language? Um, they're cursing, know. the cursing the world with their spells, essentially. It's it's a spell cast they're language. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Spell cast of hypnosis language to uh, drone us and turn us. Do into I have to spell cattle. this out for you? You know, I mean, there's there's strangely hostility in words, and we were also talking about this, and it's like, how do we? recognize this hostility in words and change it oh dude you killed it last night on that podcast 
ah, oh, that's, you know, that's a negative connotation, but we're so used to saying it, or, oh, that was the bomb, or, you know, this right? thing. You're happened. casting a spell. You're incarnating you really are, these but intentions it's... and this curse, and that when you speak curse words, curse phrases, mm -hmm. you are, in fact, putting out this energetic curse upon uh, whatever energy you're putting it towards, whether it be yourself, others, your family, your friends, like the world, whatever it is. But, well, you know, when you're like, burn it all down and then, you know, something explodes <laughs> or breaks or crashes, you know, right around you. you well, so that's interesting you say that because putting a curse is like putting a hex. And the hex symbology comes straight out of the ancient Saturnian symbology. And so Saturn was, you know, Kronos to the Greeks. He was Baal to the Sumerians. This is where Babylon comes from. This is where El comes from. Baal. I mean, there's there's a lot of Saturnian symbology in that. And it's, it's wow. <laughs> Quite, quite a fascinating. You, you're going to put a hex on somebody. And so if you look at other Saturnian symbology, you have the hexagram, which is, you know, the the the, the, the double triangle, upside down and, and right side up triangle, which is the Star of David. This is a hexagram. You have the hexagon, which is the shape it makes inside of it. The hexagon is also a two-dimensional shape of a four-dimensional or three-dimensional object, or well, even a four-dimensional object for that matter, if there's a singular in the middle, but that's the cube. And so the cube also becomes the hexagon. And so you look at Saturn and you have the hexagonal vortex of a storm that's happening at the North and the South Pole. And at the North Pole, it's visible because you have both one rotation right? and rotation. It's it ends that they're both on Jupiter and Saturn, and most likely, uh, oh, Uranus it's all, 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 yeah. And then it's like, so what's actually at ours? Is there actually this vortex? Is it inner Earth potentially? Like, what, uh, you know, like it just it's very strange. And if you spin a like a sphere with water in it and just a little bit of air. Uh, when you spin it uh, fast it enough, cribs, the air cribs, goes to the center it and it hollows out. Yeah, yeah, and it creates a toroid. And it's like by that physics, we could be a toroidal world potentially. So then, if we are yes. a toroid Earth, if we're toroid Earth is garbage can Earth, the closest thing, and the missing butt plug taken out of the donuts. That is my question. <laughs> Like what? Oh, there's a the force field. The geometry, I just, I don't know, but it fascinates me. And <laughs> mathematically, you can't really prove anyone wrong. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy. It seems to be like they're filtering souls here, right? Like it's determining it where does. you go to next, and it's designed that way. So. And we, with the whole cloning thing too, it's like how many are like how many of these people are clo are clones you know like is that why there's a firm of it yeah all right and i often think like so my talk with joseph farrell i want to go back deeper into him next time on this plasma and consciousness and then this like what he's found this like i uh, wrote in his latest book of this potentially conscious plasma freaking giant galactic entity thing that's like out in space or something that takes up like two thirds of the galaxy or something hmm. just crazy like it's like you can envision it as potentially like this massive goo of god or something who knows like but just like could that be and then it's like so plasma being a fourth state of matter and potentially conscious is that what outer space could be or like could it mm. be this like conscious timeless dimension compared mm. to this third dimension reality that we are in so that's interesting you you bring up plasma as a consciousness and so when you actually i like that study plasma when it goes through its phases it actually has consciousness it it reacts to its environment um 
I don't know if you've ever used like a Tesla coil or, or any of these things, but you, yeah, right there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bingo. So have you ever yeah. seen like the lightning or the light? Uh, like where it looks you like just, you, you just displayed a consciousness. It knew exactly I where have you were. A, where actually, you, now that you bring that up, where your uh, field Julia. was. So, yeah. I think I have a picture right here. Yeah. Right. The um, Carillion effect as well Correct. with that aura, too. And then uh, I bring up uh, the all chemist that's the, minions that's the there. fact of, of the plasma, but it's like there's so much plasma so, effect that, that could go on with that. Anyway. Exactly. And no, you're. Bang on, and that this uh the monoatomics, the ormus, that is essentially well, we another form oh, yes, exactly. of plasma state when you have it activated, when it's in water, when you give it charge, a little bit of electricity in it, then it becomes alive and it always self-organizes. And it's self-organization, how it builds, how it forms, it's like it's conscious just to the degree of its entropy and self-organizing. It's just in structure and formation. It's just, it, it's nuts to see and uh, witness and i'll be publishing a lot more of my uh alchemy research and uh, experiments coming up but let's go back to the symbols and the symbol side of alchemy <laughs> so we went through an object as a symbol so there's status symbols right a status symbol could be anything from you know a, a new watch to your fancy car um a camel, <laughs> a horse, <laughs> farm, whatnot. Uh, status symbols, you know, there, there's, a, there's a lot of connection there. Um, in, in some elements, I was actually kind of rethinking a little bit more about the Statue of Liberty. And we were talking that it also symbolizes Columbia. And then we start to think about, oh, we have the District of Columbia. We have the Columbia River, the Columbia Gorge, out where I live. We have British Columbia. <laughs> we have the nation of Columbia. I mean, it, it goes on and on and on. There's um, there's so much revolving. Yes, around. sir. When where I'm at, next to British Columbia, and then where my family land is, I have to go through Columbia Lake and the beginning of the Columbia right. River. And so, that's really where my... Uh, who is Columbia and why is this, this is a representation of the Statue of Liberty. So I just wanted to bring exactly. it Exactly. Yeah. And Columbia, D.C. being the center yeah. of it all. Correct. Correct. Don't they say the Statue Columbia of Liberty is like an London. ode to Lucifer? <laughs> well, it is. No, I mean, I, there, there's a statue in I Italy. I was saying this uh, when you were away. That is literally the same. And it's got the corona, the, 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 the sun crown. It's holding the the scriptures and the torch, and this is this is Lucifer. You know, Lucifer is also Venus. Venus is also Columbia, Isis, Ishtar, so on and so forth. Inanna. And so, mm -hmm. Inanna. And so, the statue takes on both a a male, female, and 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 on androgyny Androgynous. form. Yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> Mo moving along. So we got well, status in this. Kind of key too and that this seems to be this weird infatuation with that 